everybody and welcome back to my channel. For today's video I'm going to be talking you through my five makeup mistakes that I wish I had known before I started doing makeup. Basically this is an idea I saw another YouTuber do, um, I can't remember exactly who it is but if I can find the video I will link it in the description box below but I just kind of came across it and I thought wow what a good idea because there is so much which I have learned since doing makeup, sort of makeup online, because I've been doing makeup online for quite a long time now, but also since I've been doing makeup on clients and more of my kind of prom occasion makeup, I just feel like there is so many things which had I known at the beginning, I think it would have made doing makeup so much easier, whether that's in terms of on myself or as a makeup artist. There was just a few things which I thought that I could actually chat to you about today and anybody that's interested in makeup, whether it's on yourself or whether it's getting involved in doing it professionally, then this would probably be a really helpful video for you. And I wish that I had thought to Google a video like this or YouTube a video like this at the beginning so that it would have cut out a lot of the steps which I learned right at the beginning because I think when you start doing makeup or at least for me I thought makeup was going to be super easy and I thought that once I'd like master doing makeup on myself that that would mean that I could automatically do it on other people and that is just not the case. You have to be so you, you really have to develop your skills, you have to be so sort of intuitive with what's going to work on other people and there are just some big lessons which I learned along the way which I really want to share with you guys. So the first one which is kind of, it's not a thing, it, I just wish that I'd known this basically and that is is that you can get a makeup artist discount at most makeup brands. So for any of you that are wanting to be makeup artists or that are starting to think about that sort of career, that's something to really take into consideration is that most makeup brands have a pro scheme which you can apply to and then you get a little bit of a discount so that when you are buying and stocking up your kit it's not as expensive. I mean you will all know that at the beginning, building a makeup kit is the most expensive thing in the world. It's so expensive because makeup is expensive and obviously you want a kit that's filled with really good products like Bobbi Brown, Charlotte Tilbury, MAC and they aren't cheap but what I didn't realise when I first started makeup is that actually I could apply to these schemes and get a little bit of a discount to help me really get started and it just meant that there was more sort of available for me to use in terms of affordability, like I can put really high-end brands into my kit because with that bit of discount it just made them a little bit more affordable. So I know that's not really something that every person can do but if you are interested in taking up makeup as a career it's definitely worth just going through there's loads of websites which will tell you exactly what makeup brands um, require for you to be able to uh, get the discount because obviously you can't just apply for it say you're a makeup artist and get it a lot of places require a lot more than that like proof that you're actually working like call cool sheets and stuff like that so it's definitely worth keeping that in mind if you are wanting to start doing makeup professionally so number two is basically that not every makeup look is going to suit everybody. So when I first started doing makeup, and I've talked to people about this before, like when I've done clients and things, when they've asked me about it, and basically I was quite naive when I started doing makeup because I thought that you could do, I could do what I did on myself on somebody else and it would work just the same and it would be beautiful and they'd love it, but actually that is so far from the truth. And now saying it, it seems like completely like like of course, like of course everybody's skin tone is going to be different, texture is going to be different, lip colours are going to look different on everybody, eyeshadow colours, not everything is going to suit everyone, but at the beginning that just did not click for me, I just thought that what I liked everybody else would like or that would look good on everybody else, so had I known at the beginning that like, I guess like t for me like telling myself back then now, I would probably say like, take your time, really like look at the person's face, look at how their features um, are and work around enhancing those rather than just doing one look and putting it onto everyone's face. You've really got to know where shadow looks good on the eye for that particular eye shape and what sort of foundation finish you need for that particular skin tone and then also with skin tones there's obviously cool skin tones and warm and 
I think at the beginning, yeah, as I said, I was really naive in thinking that everything could work for everybody, but that is like absolutely not true. And the best way around that is really just experimenting with products, trying lots of different techniques, because that's the other thing, like not all techniques are gonna work on everyone. Like I really like baking. I have quite normal combination skin, but baking does not work on a lot of skin types and it's just knowing when you need to stay away from that. But there are loads of things you can do to find out more information about this. I mean, YouTube is like this endless resource of absolutely everything to do with makeup. So that's a really good place to start in terms of choosing foundation colors and things like that. Um, but also books. I mean, some of my favorite makeup artists talk about it. Like I really love Lisa Eldridge and I've got a lot of information about how to make makeup suit different people from Lisa Eldridge. So I will link her YouTube down below as well so you can go over and have a little look because it'll probably help you a lot as well with if you are looking for makeup or colours, textures, finishes that work for you. I mean Lisa Eldridge is absolutely amazing. She's one of my favourites and she's the most loveliest person. So I'll, yeah, I'll leave that down below so you can go over and have a little look at that. But yeah, I think that was probably the biggest thing I learned right at the beginning because it becomes very obvious, obvious like when you first do someone's makeup and you think why does that look like that when that looks like that on me? So I wish that I had known that going into it because you have this very quick exponential growth once you realise that that is the case. <laughs> so for makeup mistake number three, this is actually one which I did for ages because it just didn't and then I had to actually think of like, how am I going to overcome this issue? And that is putting eyelashes on clients. So typically I would always put, at the beginning, I would always put eyelashes on clients with their eyes closed. And I think it just, to me, it seemed that like, if they couldn't see what was happening, like, you know, if you had your eyes closed, then they're gonna move less. It's gonna be a more pleasant experience for the, the client. But actually what I found was when the eye was closed, sometimes, even if I used like a really small amount of glue, sometimes the glue would seep down onto the lower lash line. And I didn't want that because that can cause the inner cup, these bits here to stick. So what I do now, um, and which I wish I had known <laughs> right from the beginning, because it would have made my life so much easier, is that I actually get my clients to look down but don't close your eyes and then I just ask them to stay looking down until the lashes are dry and then I ask them to look straight ahead uh, because basically that still gives you that that kind of they're looking down so it's like the eyes are closed but it doesn't get that transfer between the glue onto the lower lash line so it just means that you don't get that like seepage and it just is so much easier. <laughs> and any of you that don't do that, have a go and see what you think because honestly, it's amazing. And what I will tend to do, and a lot of you will notice me if like I've vlogged or anything, any of my makeup looks, the client will be looking down, I'll put the eyelashes on and then I will look from underneath to make sure that they're in place. So it just makes the whole process so much easier. So makeup mistake number four is something that I actually did on my own makeup rather than on client makeup and actually, viewing my progression through my YouTube videos and my Instagram and things like that, I could really see. It wasn't until I looked back that I realized. And that is, is that less is always more. And I think like I am the first one to admit that sometimes I do my blush too heavy, my contour too heavy, my eyebrows too heavy. But honestly, when it comes to your own makeup and to client makeup, less always just looks better. The more makeup you put on, the harsher it's gonna look. And what we want makeup to do is just to enhance someone's beauty and not to hide it, or you, you just want it to look not natural, but not too harsh. And what adding a lot of, a lot of product does, it actually makes the makeup look very heavy. It makes it uncomfortable on the face. It makes it look a lot less natural and just generally less pretty. Um, so that's something I wish I had started doing from the beginning because I look back at some of my old Instagram pictures and look at my brows and my lip liner and all sorts of stuff and just think that was just too heavy. Like my face just couldn't handle that much makeup. But I don't regret any of it at all. I look back at those pictures and I think of how much fun I was having in that moment and how good about myself I felt in that moment. And all those 
things that we get wrong and that we get right, they all help us to get better and we want to learn about makeup and learn about techniques on how things work, what's good, what's not, because there are still techniques which I used when I did really heavy makeup on myself um, that I use now but just slightly tweaked, so it's a really important part of growth, but yeah, less is definitely more. <laughs> So my fifth and final makeup mistake is that softer makeup always looks more flattering. One of the things which I think when you're into makeup or into fashion or anything like that, um, you probably like scrolling through Instagram and you're seeing these very uh, harsh, very over the top, highly detailed makeup looks and they look amazing, like in pictures but they aren't always the most flattering in real life. So advice I would give to anybody who's doing their own makeup or anybody who's a makeup artist is that softer, lighter, more blown out makeup, which doesn't have, I'm not saying doesn't have as much emphasis on technique, but I find like a lot of makeup artists, particularly on Instagram, do these very like techniques which are just about like showing off your technical ability rather than making the makeup look really nice. And if there is something that I could tell myself and any of you guys is that don't get hung up on trying to show off your technical ability because actually the, you're more likely to get clients from your work if it looks and makes them feel really good and that they wanna go out and they look at their face and they think, wow, that's amazing, not, oh my god, how the hell did you do that, or that's so detailed, or that's really colourful, because in real life they, I mean for me anyway, my clients are less likely to want something that's really, got this really incredible technical ability behind it that's really colourful with loads of eyeliner and massive lashes, they're more likely to come back to me if I did something much softer and prettier and that they just feel good and they feel confident. So just don't get hung up on thinking that your makeup skills have to be like everything that you see on Instagram because yeah they're amazing and like I, I'm the same I follow loads of accounts where I get inspiration from makeup artists that do do that but that isn't necessarily what all clients want and that actually like think about what you would want if you went to have your makeup done like I know that I would want to just come out looking the best I've ever looked and I don't think that that you would necessarily get that from that type of look. I think sometimes you would if that's your style and that's what you like, but I think for probably 80 or 90% of people, they would want something that's much more softer, feminine, that's gonna emphasize what they already have and just really boost their confidence. I've wanted to film a video like this for such a long time because whenever I am in the car with one of my friends or I'm with a client or wherever I am talking to my family, one of the things I always talk about is how much I have learned since doing makeup and I talk, like a lot of people will probably laugh because I always say that doing makeup is the hardest thing that I've ever done and that even compared to my degree and my master's degree I feel like what I've learned in the last few years has been just immense. So I have wanted to film a video where I share those tips with you for absolutely ages. So if you'd like to see a part two to this video do let me know in the comments down below because there is so much more for me to tell you and I could go into like actually more detail. I could maybe do it on my face as I go or I could do it on um, a model if you wanted me to. Like actual like I could do step by step things that I do physically like on somebody rather than just talking about things. Um, so yeah, give me a thumbs up if you wanna see that or leave me a comment. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.